Hi, Hi Brian. Brian. Hi, guys. How are you doing today? <laughs> yeah, good. We're speaking in unison, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, first off, I wanted to I wanted to ask you guys about how how important uh, the costumes are on something like this when you have a period setting. I mean, does it really help you kind of get into the character that much? Oh yeah, they really help. It's yeah, it's completely vital, isn't it? Actually, mm. to help you get into character. And we've kind of taken a few liberties. We've smash cut the 15th century Renaissance style with um, kind of modern Vivian Westwood cuts, and and some, a lot of the dresses are cut on the bias. So it's all it has a very contemporary feel. And what they cut on the bias? Cut on the bias. What does that mean? It's it's a way of cutting a dress. I had no idea. Well, <laughs> next time you wear a dress, we'll cut, have it cut on the bias okay, for cool. you. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> it's uh, yeah the costume they really let you they help you into the character yeah. and and our show is quite anachronistic so like like Laura says being able to to sort of have um period costumes that are twisted up with modern styles kind of communicates the feel of the show mm. and heading into first season a lot of the costume design was quite symbolic of a character's mood or a character's tone or is they were always kind of a metaphor for where that character was at any point in the in the story, and that that was pretty that was pretty cool. We're mm. all on big journeys though this season, so I think we've had to it's had to go a tiny little bit more practical. But the costumes are still still incredible and lavish and mm. and um, interesting. But yeah, t slightly more practical. Right. So what, I mean, if you had to pick like one one uh, either storyline or, or plot point uh, that you're look, really looking forward to the fan scene this year, I mean, what would you say that is? Well, I mean, I know what you, you, you're going to say. Um, I, on a personal note, yeah. that, but, but I'm looking forward to seeing probably um, Peru. Yeah, we, we go to the new world this season. Um, there was a period in, of five years in Leonardo da Vinci's life, 27 to 32. No one has any idea where he was, where he went. He vanished. There's lots of speculation, but nothing, no proof. Um, and since the beginning of the first season, we've been teasing South America as the potential location of the Book of Leaves, which is the, the thing Leonardo is chasing. So this season, we actually get to go to the new world and uh, meet a whole new bunch of characters, mm. explore Machu Picchu, the Incan Empire. Um, and that's, uh, that really throws the show out of its comfort zone. Uh, it's really interesting, too, because you're also, I mean, cause you're also taking kind of things that have been addressed in history and kind of putting your own spin on them. So it must be a lot of fun to do. Oh, yeah, it's great. Um, it's it's there's it a, there's all the fun. does it? it no, feels, you feel free. Yeah, you feel free in, in a world that is, a lot of it is historically accurate, and you, d you do naturally feel the pressure of telling, telling a, the truth and telling a story that existed and people went through and experienced and, it, and existed in time. But what's great about our show is that we've, taken the roof off of it <laughs> and we can breathe and we can um, play around yeah. with history and and um, historical fantasy is what we're yeah. um, calling the show it's you've got a lovely mixture of truth and and uh, fiction truth and outright lies <laughs> <laughs> so are there any uh, are there any like a uh, uh, favorite guest stars you have uh, this season that come aboard that you can talk about Ooh. Yeah, there's some great. We've got some great new um, characters this season. Uh, Lee Boardman, who's a fantastic British actor, character actor, very very funny, plays Amerigo Vespucci. He was the man uh, known for discovering oh, yeah. America. Um, and got girls, more girls, more this girls year. this year. That was really exciting to get a um, load of load of girls in. Makeup truck was female heavy. This Finally, year. <laughs> um, Carolina Guerra, who is a Colombian actress, fantastic, and plays uh, Ema Karma, who is uh, the high priestess of the Incan Empire. Um, and the so most incredible skin you've ever seen in your life. Really lovely skin. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So can you talk about, um, I guess, just working with David, I guess, in general, and how, I mean, I know David's in, in extremely busy, but can you talk about how hands-on he is when you guys are actually shooting um, this season? Well, it's, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. the, the, what I find incredible about David is that he he's so full of energy and passion, it's infectious. It spreads through the set from the top all the way down. But amazingly, no matter how many projects he's got on the cooker, whether he's doing Batman there or should Superman, be five whether he's doing him, Man of Steel, there? he must be cloned. <laughs> yeah. Because you send him an email and it pings back instantly. He gets back faster to me than my mum. I, I mean, I, I honestly, I don't know. I don't know how he does it, but um, fast typer. Yeah, very fast typer and fast thinker. <laughs> um, but uh, he, yeah. So he's a, he's a great. He's a great. He is. He's the driving force behind the show. And he came over and directed um, bits of season two, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Which was really nice to have him um, in the director's chair. Yeah, we, the crew love him. Yeah, they do.